Rotoscoping can be a really tedious and time-consuming task, but thankfully, there's a lot of tricks that we can employ to make the computer do a lot of the heavy lifting for us and help things just to go a little bit smoother and a little bit faster. Now, in the 10 plus years I've been doing visual effects, I've made a lot of mistakes, but I've also stumbled over hacks and tips that can help make rotoscoping and masking a lot faster, and so that's what I'm gonna share with you today. So the first question that's good to ask is how much rotoscoping do you actually need to do? Now, a lot of this depends on exactly what you wanna do. So if we know there's just the shoulders and the head, basically, that we wanna mask out, then, hey, we could do that. But I didn't know exactly how much I wanted to do when I was planning this shot. And I did all the roto first, and I rotoed everything, because I figured it was gonna be a big, crazy effect, which ended up just being kind of not that crazy, and I probably could have gotten away with a lot less. So with a little planning ahead, I could have saved a lot of time by not doing everything in this scene. Now getting down to actual blender techniques, before we go ahead and do any actual rotoscoping, another really good question to ask is, what can I track? So you can see here, there's a lot of tracking markers all over this guy, and these will act as really nice anchor points so you can parent your mask, and that just cuts down a huge amount of the work that you're gonna have to do as you're masking. Now, if we actually go from tracking mode into masking mode, you can see the final mask here, and this thing took a lot of work. So many handles to be manipulating over so many different frames, and it can be really overwhelming sometimes. And that's partly why it's good practice to just go piece by piece. So if I hit N here and we go over into the side panel, you can see there's a tab that says mask down here. And I feel like this is kind of a hidden feature. It's not super obvious that this exists here, but it's really great because you can break your mask up into a whole bunch of different layers and do a lot of different smaller parts at a time. I've just broken them up into legs and torso and head, just a whole bunch of tiny little pieces all over the place. And by working with one part at a time, it's a lot less overwhelming and you have a lot less tracking handles to take care of at one time. And that's actually my fourth tip, that you only want to use as few tracking handles as possible. Here's a really great example of that and a really bad example of that. For the upper arm here, we've got eight tracking handles, and this is probably going to depend a lot on the complexity of the shape that you're rotoscoping, but the fewer handles you have to work with, the less time you're going to have to spend matching up each handle for every frame that you need to adjust it. Now, like I mentioned, a really bad example of doing this is the lower arm here, which was a very complex shape. You can see there's all of these wrinkles. And I tried to use as few tracking handles as I could, but this took a really long time because every frame that I had to adjust it, I needed to babysit every single one of these handles just to make sure that they were in the right position. And partly that's just what you gotta do when you're rotoscoping. But if you can get away with it, using less handles, will save you a lot of time. Now watching somebody do rotoscoping is probably similar to watching paint dry, but I'm gonna try and breeze through some of these tips so I can demonstrate them. Let's just start with adding in a new mask layer. Okay, so we're gonna work on this upper arm probably because it's one of the most simple ones we could work on, but we've got a tracking marker up here. So that will kind of give us a reference point for how things are moving. So that's a good start. Let's put in some handles. So holding control and dragging, we can kind of add in some of these. Now, like I mentioned, this probably only needs about eight handles because it's such a simple shape to be rotoscoping. Yeah, something like that should be pretty decent. And then to close the loop, we hit Alt-C. There you've got it. So to actually get this working, we want to have automatic keyframes enabled. That way, when we scrub to a frame, it will record the changes that we make. And we also want to actually parent it to the track here. So selecting the whole mask with our mouse hovering over handle and hitting L, and then shift selecting the track here. I'm going to hit Control P. And that way, when we play the animation, you can see the mask is parented to the shoulder here, which is a pretty good start. Now, let's just make a slight adjustment to this. And you can see a little yellow bar will show up here on the timeline at the bottom. That just means we have a keyframe put in. 
And this pretty well covers all the tips that I've mentioned so far. We know there's going to be something behind here, so we do need to rotoscope this part out. We've got our mask parented to a tracking marker to save us a lot of work, and there's not very many handles to adjust. So for my final tip here, something that is really tempting to do when you're rotoscoping is to go a few frames and see, oh, it's not aligned anymore. I need to adjust this. But something that I've learned over the years is it's a good idea to go a good amount of frames later and then adjust the mask. And once you've got a few sparsely populated keyframes, surprisingly, it'll actually be in a lot of the positions that you need it to be. Now, something that kind of helps with this is if you see a large dramatic movement, like here, I move my arm back, you can kind of see that there's a start point and an end point to that motion. So I'm going to go to the point where it ends, and that is when you'd want to make your adjustment here. Now it's not perfect, but that should be good for demo purposes. And now as I scrub in between these frames, you can see the mask kind of approximates the movement a little bit, and adjusting these in between frames will be a lot easier because the mask is already kind of where it needs to be. Now, I said that was my final tip, but something else that's kind of helpful when doing limbs like this is to almost like add joints to it. See when it goes back, we could grab it and rotate it. That's not that much work. Maybe another grab. Okay, this is pretty decent. Or what we could do is we could set the 2D cursor here by holding shift and right click to the shoulder joint up here and we can set the rotation to be around the 2D cursor. That way, when we rotate it back, it almost rotates as if there's a rig or bones working to help us out here. And that's been a trick that I've found pretty helpful lately. Now I would just go through, finish out these major movements as things happen. Uh, here's another one. So it's pretty decent here. Let's say this is me adjusting it properly and then it moves, select everything, rotate it out, just make sure that's lined up. And then once I go through pretty much the whole animation doing that, that's when I'll go to these in-between frames and align things a little bit more accurately. So I hope you found these rotoscoping tips helpful. I know it's not the most exciting thing in the world to do, but it is very necessary for visual effects. Hopefully these are one of the jobs that AI is gonna take over, but we'll see if that actually happens. Something I've been finding pretty useful lately is this pack of seamless looping smoke assets. And this project, I'm actually using them for a couple of different shots. If you'd like to grab this pack for free, there's a link in the description where you can get that. Hope you have an excellent day.